Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode concerns perspectives in archaeology. By the end of this episode, you will be able to describe some of the influential perspectives in archaeology and discuss their strengths and weaknesses. In this presentation, you will learn about the intellectual perspectives that have shaped archaeology as a discipline, including antiquarianism, culture history, culture reconstruction, evolutionary paradigms, and postmodernism. As its name suggests, antiquarianism involves the study of antiquities. Antiquarian scholars regard artifacts as objective facts about ancient history. Especially since the 1800s, the antiquarian tradition in Europe has shown the value of learning from the ancient evidence that predated written history. Antiquarianism can be traced much earlier in other parts of the world, such as in China, but it became a sustained tradition in Europe since the 1800s. Ancient relics were appreciated as curiosities, as works of art, and as sources of information about the past. These interests contributed to early developments of archaeology and of museums. While antiquarians stressed the scientific and cultural values of artifacts, an implied monetary value unfortunately has contributed to site looting, treasure hunting, and illicit trades in antiquities. Modern archaeology institutes and museums adhere to strict policies about antiquities aligned with several government laws and international agreements. Like antiquarianism, the perspective of culture history regards artifacts as direct primary evidence from the past. Culture historians build chronological narratives based on their descriptions of artifacts that they find in sites, stratigraphic layers, and known time periods. The classic example of a culture history narrative is the Three Age system in Europe. Stone tools were popular long ago, but eventually they were replaced by bronze. Later, the bronze tools were replaced by iron. Culture history narratives could apply to any situation of ordering artifacts chronologically. The approach is similar to ethnographic descriptions of living cultural groups, except that in this case the groups are represented only by their remnants that survive in archaeological records. Culture historians can describe the assemblages of artifacts that were used by people who lived in measurable geographic areas and time periods. One example is shown here for defining the pottery traditions that changed through a series of time periods in the Mariana Islands since 1500 BC. These material-based descriptive results from culture history provide an essential basis and a framework for developing new ideas and testing new questions and theories and explanations in archaeology. These results in themselves do not address any high order of archaeological theory, but rather they provide a necessary foundation for further research. The perspective of culture reconstruction concentrates on capturing or recapturing a sense of what sites were like during the times when they had been used. You can think of culture reconstruction as a way of imagining ancient people in the original site contexts. In this approach, we need to evaluate our sources of information and assess how accurately they represent the past. Cultural reconstructions usually begin with the known observable archaeological record and then build interpretations. These stone ruins in Guam represented the pillar supports of old houses dated to the 1600s and they offered an opportunity for a cultural reconstruction. After recording, mapping, excavating, and studying these sites in detail, I created digital image registrations of the stone ruins in their current condition. Next, I used the real site measurements to illustrate how the stone pillars would have stood upright originally, and then I tested different ideas about the wood and thatch elements that had disintegrated long ago. The perspective of culture reconstruction encourages us to explore new ideas about ancient site context and about how people lived in those sites in real life of the past. We can develop new ideas and test them through further research. 
Culture reconstructions can capture snapshots in time, but they do not necessarily address chronological change through time. We can study chronological change through a series of culture reconstructions, or through the traditional culture history approach, or perhaps through evolutionary paradigms. In an evolutionary perspective, archaeologists can see how the human species has adapted through time, and how cultural groups have changed along with their varied circumstances through time. These observations suggest a parallel between biological evolution and the archaeological record. Many archaeologists have attempted to explain cultural change through time in terms of inheritance, adaptation, and selection as you might see in evolutionary biology. We need to remember that biology and culture operate concurrently but differently. They may appear parallel with one another, but they are not the same. Evolutionary paradigms in archaeology aim to explain why human cultural behaviors have changed through time. Culture history gives us the evidence of chronological change, but then the evidence still would need to be explained in terms of evolutionary theory. A culture reconstruction approach can begin to fill the picture of how chronologies of artifacts correlated with other aspects of culture. In this way, we can improve our explanations of evolutionary theory or of any other theory. In the philosophy of science, a formal theoretical explanation can involve two aspects. First, we can describe the proximate causes of how cultures have changed, as seen in the chronological orders of site-specific archaeological assemblages. Second, we can explain the ultimate causes of why those changes occurred in terms of universal scientific theories or principles. Evolutionary paradigms provide potential framework for explaining ultimate causation, but two questions so far are unresolved in evolutionary archaeology. First, what actually is being explained of relevance in the field of archaeology? Second, how can we evaluate the effectiveness or success of the explanation? These questions could apply to any theory, and they have contributed to the development of a perspective known as postmodernism that challenges us to reconsider how we know what we think we know about archaeology or about any other field of study. Postmodernism questions the role of our preconceived notions or bias in everything that we do. This bias is rejected as a symptom of modernism, and instead a postmodern perspective aims to think about the world without any inbuilt bias. The material substance of the archaeological record of course provides objective facts about the past, but the postmodern critique asks how we may have been biased in making those original observations, and especially in drawing our interpretive conclusions. The postmodern critique is particularly relevant for studying sites of ancient ritual performance or contexts that no longer are practiced today. We can record and describe these sites accurately in technical terms of raw materials, measured dimensions, and other physical attributes. Nonetheless, we possibly are missing the essence of a site's cultural meaning in the past actions of the people that we no longer can observe today. Caves with rock art are notoriously difficult in archaeological studies. Many archaeologists refrain from trying to explain the original cultural meanings of these sites. Rather, they are understood in vague terms as places of specialized activities apart from ordinary daily practicalities. We can describe the rock art, and we can describe the contents of archaeological deposits in the same caves. Further speculative interpretation, though, would need to demonstrate a logical link between the objective data and the proposed interpretation. The postmodern critique in its extreme form would question our ability to know anything at all, but archaeology works with the advantage of obtaining its primary data from real material records. The more closely we can work with the positive known data, the more confidently we can manage the effects of our preconceived notions or bias. As you have seen in this presentation, different perspectives have influenced the thought and practice of archaeology. 
These points of view could be configured or operationalized in many possible options. According to varying opinions of the strengths and weaknesses of these perspectives, archaeologists have developed numerous formalized theories and schools of thought. I will not review all of those theories in this episode, but you should be equipped to consider how they developed along with the general perspectives that have influenced archaeology overall. In concluding this episode, you should be able to identify some of the influential perspectives in archaeology, and you can discuss their strengths and weaknesses. For your further consideration, you could trace these influences in different archaeological theories or schools of thought. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you will explore more with the Archaeology Studio.